Cedar Valley is back town station with the neighborhood watch. Every first and third Thursday of the month, we talk about all things Santa Clarita Valley law enforcement related with some deputies from our local Santa Clarita Valley Sheriff Station Crime Prevention Unit here in the studio. We have Deputy Regina Yost and Deputy Josh Dubin. Thanks Morning. for coming down, guys. That was a great intro, Perry. It's great. Am I getting better? I'm, I'm you are getting to a better. Peak. I just you were you were a little grumpy earlier. <laughs> I would well, like to tell you I'm that still getting coffee, so. on the way to the studio this morning, yeah. I stopped at my favorite retail establishment to purchase coffee beverage. Okay. I got a green tea, green iced tea, unsweetened. Okay. You can mention Starbucks. They're not going like, to come down <laughs> on us. <laughs> you, you said talking? it, not me. <laughs> okay. And the barista wrote, happy Thursday on my cup. Yeah, how did that make you feel? My day started great. <laughs> and what then, about... And, and then Perry's phone's going off <laughs> in the middle of a live broadcast. Off. That's fantastic. <laughs> and you know what? It's not going to interrupt the show. That's the no, thing. We'll That's just keep pushing You're forward. Professional. Yeah, we'll keep pushing forward. What about you, Regina? How's your day going? I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> We're here. We're I here. Love <laughs> I didn't have coffee yet, but I'm oh, okay. okay. But you know what? You still seem pretty lively, uh, so more right. power to you. So we're here to talk about a few things. We had um, some breaking news we want to discuss. A training drill probably most of you uh, saw at the Valencia Mall. White Ribbon Week. I always stumble on that one. I do, too. It's actually quite tough too. to say fast. Um, an Uber case in the news and summer crime. So That's much to talk about. So much to talk about. We're going to have a packed hour. What do you want to talk about first? Let's talk about what was going on at the Valencia Mall. Um, it looked like there was a training drill. There was the bomb squad out there on right. Sunday night right. um, after the mall closed down. There was a bit of a training operation going on, right? News Director Perry Smith was there. I was there. Covering the, uh, covering the training. Yeah, it's training that we do as uh, a sheriff's department. And the training type of scenarios that we were working on were emergency situations that um, a firefighter, a patrol deputy, um, Westfield security um, would possibly encounter. And that was anything from um, a bomb squad type incident to a rescue, to a medical rescue, um, to a potentially armed suspect. So it was it was actually, a, and you were there the whole time. You, you saw some of the stuff that was going on. It was really, really a good training. And, you know, a big shout out to Westfield for partnering with us. They let us use their property. They were working with us hand in hand. A lot of their security officers there were actually working the different scenarios with us. So that was a lot of fun. Um, we had, you know, our Aero Bureau helicopters there. Uh, like you said, the bomb squad. Um, yeah, there was more than 200 people there. Right? right, right. You know, the L.A. County Fire Department had a huge role in it. They brought out a lot of their equipment, so they got to work with us. Um, we had deputies from Palmdale Station, our station, our headquarters assignment. So a lot of deputies there, a lot of firefighters there, a lot of Westfield staff there. Um, we had some media there that was covering the event, taking some video and, and interviewing some of the people. So it was really, it was a good event to, you know, how we would handle a real world situation. We had different scenarios and we would play out that scenario and then restart and start a different type of scenario. So it was good. And uh, Deputy Yost, have you been through um, that kind of a drill before? Yes, I, I've done You've a done little the bit training. of the training that they had. Unfortunately, we didn't get to take part in it. The you didn't do this most recent one? No, our, okay. our, our team ended up going out to the field and working in lieu of the other patrol deputies taking part in that. So. Right, well, you had 200 personnel Crime prevention there, so. was out so there fighting some, crime. <laughs> so you had to, yeah, somebody has got to cover the streets. Correct. Um and uh, what's that like um, to go through the training as a, as a deputy um, at the time? Because you've done it before, right? I mean, they do it throughout the right. year at different locations, different stations to give everybody some experience with that. You know, it's always good to have training because it gives us a refresher. You know, we're always trying to prepare for what's to come. We never know when any of that's going to happen. So I think when deputies get that training and we go through it, it's a refresher for us. It, it's an eye-opener that, hey, you know, there's some stuff we need to work on. You know, there's some tactics we need to go over more often. And it's a lot of uh, working together with your team. So, and they say the there's training. sorry, there's they say there's certain scenarios you just like can't prepare for. And I'm sure you've been in high stress situations before. So where does that that training help as far as when you're when you have to make those quick decisions and when you're in those you know those pressure spots? I think it helps with the communication because when we do those trainings, we learn certain verbiage and certain tactics that we use as a team. So when we do have an emergency situation, we all kind of know the same codes, the same verbiage the same um you know hand signals and movement 
So it helps, w you know, that we're all on the same page. Well, and that's part of it, too, because you're working on the coordination with uh, not only your own command, but, like, fire department, like right. you were saying. Right? That's what I was just going to add. You know, uh, we have our own set of radio codes and our own set of, you know, the way we tactically do things, and the fire department has their own set of codes and the way they tactically do things. So working together, you know, Westfield, the fire department, um, the sheriff's department, it was it was, it was was great. Right, because you had private... Um security guards there as well and they were it seemed like they were involved in the drill and working right you know, coordinate yeah that's cool um and then we also wanted to talk about um in addition to the training drills the white ribbon week we have to take a quick commercial break is it break time perfect hair yes break time <laughs> and he has a microphone perfect hair or <laughs> and he has a Mark, Mark Rubina, our sound engineer, we haven't given him much love in the show. He is wearing a Los Angeles Kings out. hat. He's he's ready to go for the playoffs. So you push. can't see his perfect hair today. <laughs> Ironically, he's a Blackhawks fan. Isn't that right? Definitely not. No, definitely. Okay, but he is wearing a Kings hat. I believe they won last night. I believe they did too. I didn't catch that game. But we're gonna take a quick commercial break. We'll be right back on your hometown station, KHTS AM twelve twenty. <laughs> Welcome back, Santa Clarita Valley. We're here on your hometown station, KHTS AM 1220, with the Neighborhood Watch. Every first and third Thursday, we're talking about all... That was more energy than the first time. All right. All right. You're going to rate me throughout the show as I I'm am. coming back. You're, you're getting out of your grumpy slump. It's good. <laughs> Thank you. That's good to know. <laughs> and in case you... He must have had his toaster strudel. <laughs> well, you see. <laughs> you see, you Deputy Wilson, Perry was a little grumpy this morning. Uh oh and for those of you who missed that, Deputy Jonathan Wilson has just joined us from the Santa Clarita Valley Sheriff's Station here with Deputy Regina Yost also and Deputy Josh Dubin. Hi, Perry. We were just talking about the drill. Uh, Deputy Jonathan Wilson, we were talking about the uh, Valencia Mall uh, training drill on Sunday. Were you involved in that or were you out on the patrol? I was on patrol. Okay, but have you, have you gone, through, gone through one of those? We've done active shooter training before in the past, but never anything that extensive. And we were just kind of talking about how the, the communication and, and how all of that can be bettered by those type of drills. Oh, yeah, by far. I mean, I would imagine something like that would just, I mean, the group of people that came, I mean, SCB was involved. I take right. it, uh, yeah. Aero Bureau. How many, how many deputies were involved? About 200. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's, we've never had anything like that. So, yeah. something so like it was that really, was very it was, it was a great, you intense. know, it was a great opportunity to have that come to the Santa Clarita Valley. Not to mention, we were used as an example. I know we had Cal Arts there as spectators, too, and a lot of others. Oh, really? As far as their security and yeah. their forces? Right. right there, too, just to check out. So it was really a learning opportunity for, you know, local schools, you know, Westfield, us, the fire department. It was a good, it was a good program. And anytime we can get Deputy Josh Dubin on camera and do Why, local yeah. news. Well. I mean, it's just everybody benefits from that. I, I don't know about all that, but <laughs> but also going on this week, uh, we wanted to talk about the White Ribbon Week and uh, Deputy Josh Dubin. You've been doing a lot of that outreach as far as just talking to um, high school seniors, right? Right, and just kind of giving them the message. Right, myself and Captain Johnson have been going um, to speak with the graduating class of 2014, and we are slowly working our way through each of the high schools the graduate just talking specifically to the seniors and you know some of the things that i i talk to them about i'll kind of give you i'll give you a preview or a, a rundown of what my my speech is that i tell them is i you know i try and have a, a discussion with them and i explain to them you know now you're graduating for 12 years people have been telling you what to do and now people aren't going to tell you what to do anymore you're going to be an adult uh, many of these seniors are turning 18 and so we ask them if from a deputy level um, from a patrol deputy level we ask them to wear the white ribbon on their gown on the left side over their heart um, as they're walking and as they're graduating to not only remember the students and young people that we've lost in vehicular traffic collisions here in the Santa Clarita Valley but um, to make a pledge to not drive distracted not drive drunk remember you know good choices smart choices and you know we've had a number of incidents over the last what week and a half here in the Santa Clarita Valley um, as you know reminders of that so that's kind of a little bit what I'm talking to the seniors about and what Captain Johnson's talking to the seniors about um, and, that, and you know it's pretty well you know taken that um, you know and they understand because 
and you could comment more on this. I think you guys did a story on hometownstation.com regarding the students that were in the traffic collision on Newhall Ranch Road. Yeah, I'm glad you mentioned that. We did want to update uh, that for our listeners and our website readers. The the girl is still in intensive care unit. Two teens were ejected in that crash. There was a crash, um, the one you're talking about Friday night or Saturday night. It was a really sad situation. I guess five teens were traveling east on Newhall Ranch Road and um, lost control of the car. We're not sure of the circumstances. That's The crash is still under investigation. Uh, but two teens were, um, at least two teens were reportedly not wearing their seatbelt and ejected from the car. Unfortunately, one of them was taken to intensive care unit and um, she is with her family and she is recovering. She's still in intensive care, um, but she had emergency surgery and, and the family is um, optimistic about her recovery. All of the other teenagers, um, thankfully, are home and they're, they're recovering from that. But yeah, it's, I mean, every year around this time, like you said, it's, it's something that happens and it's, and it's good that we get the message out. These, these students were actually underclassmen. Right. Um, yeah, were these were not juniors. seniors. And, you know, in talking to some of the seniors, some of them mentioned to me, oh, well, was it a crash relating to alcohol or drugs and and our preliminary investigation so far is, is saying that it was not right it had nothing to do with alcohol or drugs uh, but it doesn't take that to do right it only exactly takes a second, right I right mean, that's kind of so you know whether it's you know blasting loud music texting and driving tweeting facebooking um you know there's five five people in the car some of which allegedly weren't wearing seatbelts. you know i i just tried to give the seniors a real world you know this is what's going on, and, and the choice is really theirs, and, and we ask them to, to make good choices. And that kind of dovetails with the message that goes out in every 15 minutes, right, where you guys do the um, the crash simulations. I mean, right. is it similar? Is kind of the same thing? There's Yeah, you know what? It's based – every one of these seniors has gone through the every 15 minutes program, so it's kind of a reminder of that. And, um, you know, and we tie it in with some stuff that's going on, you know, right now in the community and, and with the graduations of all the different schools and – and stuff like that. So um, I think it's a powerful message, and, and I think it's pretty well well received by the kids that we've spoken to. So that's good. And uh, is there any is, is there a question and answer session? Do they ask questions? Do you get feedback from these uh, No, you know or? what? Uh, we talk to them as a group, and some of these groups are rather large, six, seven, eight hundred kids. Mm. Um, but, you know, we hang out afterwards, and, and we'll chat and, and stuff like that. And many of them take to Twitter and will send us questions or you know, whatever the case may be, and we have a dialogue, so. And and speaking of outreach and dialogue, I wanted to talk about, now that we have Deputy Wilson and, and Deputy Yost, two of our uh, crime prevention unit leaders uh, for the Valencia and Canyon Country West zones, talk a little bit about uh, summer crime. We know there's a rise. Um, generally, during the summer, you have more free time with the younger population, and you see uh, more crime just as a result, right? I mean, is that a fair statement every year, probably about this time? I, I would say yes, crime does go up in the summertime because you do have a lot of kids um, now out of school and up to no good, is like what I like to say, you know. Idle um, hands. I know in the Valencia <laughs> area, you know, um, some of the main things that go on there is we have the mall. And so we get a lot of kids, a lot of complaints over there from the patrons and from the, you know, mall security that, you know, the kids are just loitering, loitering. just up to no good, just hanging around. It's one thing if they're there for a purpose, but it's another thing to just, you know, be causing a ruckus over there, and so we get a lot of problems. And this isn't the this isn't all all kids, you know. It, it I guess it goes hand in hand with the summertime. You're out of school, and like you said, mm -hmm. idle hands. So um, we're going to be running as a crime prevention unit, and as some of our specialized team, we're going to be running some curfew operations. We're going to be running. Um, we're going to break out the T threes. Perry Smith knows all about the T3s. Awesome T's. we got to take a quick break, and we'll be right back. I want to talk a little bit more about uh, summer crime enforcement and what the Santa Clarita Valley Sheriff's Station is doing. We get back on your hometown station, KHTS AM 1220.